In these uncertain economic times, it's easy to be worried about protecting your wealth, your hard-earned savings, and your family's financial future. Plunging interest rates, the devaluating dollar, and political unrest constantly threaten what you have worked hard to earn and all that you own. That's why now it's more important than ever to protect your assets and have the money you need to make your dreams come true. Welcome to the Global Wealth Fortress Report with successful global entrepreneur and wealth preservation expert, Joel Nagel. Joel's helped thousands of people just like you protect what you have so that you can make even more and make your every dream come true. So, sit back and enjoy Joel Nagel's offshore expert advice on how you can live the good life at a great price, where the sun never sets on your financial fortress. Hello and welcome to Joel Nagel's Wealth Fortress. And with me right on this screen, uh, before your very eyes is Joel Nagel. Joel, welcome to your own show. <laughs> Thanks, Carter. It's great to be with you. It's first time I've actually been in my own office for quite a while. So I'm very happy to be uh, speaking to you from my office just outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's fantastic. And I see a lot of pictures of your seven children in the background. Yeah, right. we do. We have uh, like a little collage of uh, different photos, Christmas photos and that's great you know, and things, softball teams and soccer teams. And that's uh, that's on fantastic. this wall that you can't see over the other way, there's a picture of them all on camels. So that's one of my favorite uh, collages as well. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, today, um, first, let me say, folks, just for those who are watching this weekly podcast for the first time, uh, Joel Nagel's Wealth Fortress Report. Um, Joel is the nation's leading asset protection attorney, okay, barring none. And we're fortunate because the same information that he gives to some of the leading clients in the country, he gives to us on this report, this podcast, video podcast every week, two o'clock on Thursdays, all right? Right, Joel, two o'clock Thursday at offshore.club, offshore.club. Um, some of you are gonna be getting this in the newsletter. If you haven't subscribed yet to the Offshore Club newsletter, go to offshore.club and uh, subscribe to the Offshore uh, Offshore Gazette, okay? So Joel, a lot going on with people's finances now. A very, very, uh, I'm gonna tell you, I think it's a very nefarious situation at this point. Uh, with what the, the the Biden folks are doing, the way they're coming after people's money. You're on the front line. What the hell is going on? Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's no there's no simple solution, right? I mean, the government's been printing the last couple of years now to the point, literally trillions and trillions of dollars they printed and given away. They realize that that, that is not sustainable. Um, you know, this year we're going to have a budget where only about half of the money the government spends actually comes from tax revenue. The other half is coming from borrowing. So imagine your family budget where you spend exactly twice what you make. Uh, you'd have to ask yourself, well, how, how long can you sustain that? Can you do it for six months? Could you do it for a year? Maybe. Uh, but the government's been doing it year in, year out. And, uh, you know, I think the party is, uh, the handwriting is on the wall. The party is going to come to an end here. The party is going to come to an end. They're printing $120 billion a month, as we said last week. Uh, this this is fiat money, and every dollar they print, print uh, lessens the value of, of the money in, in working people's pockets, Joel. And on top of that, uh, of course, it, it sends inflation through the ceiling. Joel, weren't you, weren't, weren't you thrilled? You live in Pennsylvania just like I do. The weather gets pretty confound cold up here. Weren't you thrilled with the uh, government's announcement two weeks ago that we can expect our heating prices to rise by 54% this winter? Well, you know, when you tell people that, you know, the, you know, that fossil fuels are bad, they have to be, you know, eliminated. Uh, I mean, this area, Western Pennsylvania, West Virginia, you know, this is truly a cold country. And uh, yeah, I, I do understand that we should be looking to the future and looking for alternate ways to replace that over time. But the Biden administration is not doing that. They're insisting that, that big uh, production facilities be closed. Same thing with nuclear power. Uh, and, you know, the, the solar wind community, they're just not able to pick up all the gaps. So that's why you're seeing that. The same thing in Western Europe, by the way. I, you know, I just came over here from uh, 
from Europe. And I think the day or two before I came over, there was a headline in the paper uh, and it was referring to Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia. It says Putin to raise uh, natural gas prices in Western Europe by 21 percent. Uh, it wasn't really Putin. It was Gazprom. But, you know, the feeling is that that he's behind that. So you're seeing these major, major increases in, in energy costs. And it's because we're taking, you know, viable sources off the market. And uh, when you when you do that, you know, the prices are going to rise. There's no no ands, ifs or buts. Through the ceiling. I, yesterday, I came back from my place up in West Virginia and stopped to fill up my Jeep. Uh, a year and a half ago, when Trump was president, it cost me just under $50 to fill up the Jeep. Yesterday, it was $70. Shocking. Shocking. So it, so you have the government spending like there's no tomorrow, printing money uh, so that we're operating essentially on fiat currency. And then, and I'm sure, Joel, you're hearing this from your clients because your clients are people who are have worked very hard for their money. A lot of them have made a substantial amount, but they don't like to see somebody, government, come in and confiscate it. Biden taxation is, I, I, want, I want to put this in perspective. I want to talk for a minute about where the Biden taxation is going and people better brace themselves. And then, Joel, what you're saying to clients they can do about it, various various approaches to take, all within the law, of course. Um, but first, the, the taxation, we know that the Biden administration floated their $600. We want to go after Yellen, always Yellen. Yellen, I got to be honest with you, she drives me nuts. Yellen says, we're only going to do this to the wealthy, but we're only trying to close wealthy people's loopholes. So we're going to monitor every penny you spend, real Americans, if you spend, if you have $600 in transactions a year. Well, I got news for you, Miss Yellen, $600 a year ain't wealthy. You're wealthy, Michelle, and you got $2 million for every speech you gave after you left government and started parlaying your government service. But for real people telling them, we're just going after the wealthy, but we're going to monitor every penny you spend after the first $600 to tax it. Right, well, Joel? The, the notion that you're going to tax the wealthy is, is ridiculous. I mean, the wealthy have plenty of ways to fight back. I work with wealthy clients. You know, you have you know, there was there was an, an article the other day that said under all the proposed tax increases, Jeff Bezos would not pay one extra dollar in tax. And that's because, you know, these guys have wealth. They don't necessarily have income. Uh, anybody who works for a living has income and the tax rates apply to earned income. They also apply to capital gains. But what if instead of getting dividends, what if instead of getting a paycheck, what if you just you know, you have stock in a company called Amazon and it keeps going up every day and your worth goes from a billion to five billion to 10 billion to 20 billion to 50 billion to 100 billion and beyond. How much of that can the government tax? They can't tax anything. Um, that's just the way our tax system is set up. So it's ridiculous to talk about taxing the wealthy. They're, you know, they're going to tax people who work for a living, some of whom do make a lot of money. But as we talked about last week, they also pay the, the the highest and most disproportionate percentage of all taxes. So, you know, how much more do you want to want to try to tax the wealthy? The more you do, uh, or the upper income, let's say upper middle class, are really the the people that they're targeting. The people in that group, um, you know, they have choices. They can decide they don't want to earn any more money. You have people expatriating, moving out of the country, uh, working hard to transition their wealth from ordinary income to capital gains or something like that, carried interests. Um, you know, some guy who's collecting a paycheck, uh, who's making, you know, 25 bucks an hour, they don't have any of those options, any of those choices. They get a paycheck and whatever's taken out is what's taken out. So you're absolutely correct. When, when the government talks about increasing taxes on the wealthy, um, there's just not enough additional income for them to grab. It's really going after upper middle class and middle class. That's where that's where these tax increases. I mean, you talked about your your you know the cost of your gasoline going up. Well, that's really a tax on everybody, which means it has the biggest impact on the poor, right? Because you could still afford to do your trip, even though it went from $50 to $70. Um, you know, Jeff Bezos, he can afford to put in whatever, you know, it costs to fill up his, you know, Rolls Royce. Um, but the the working guy who you know is is just getting by has to sit there and say, well, 
can I even afford to take that trip now? Because, you know, I could barely afford $50. I can't afford $70. If I do that, you know, I can't pick up prescription medication for my spouse or right. I can't take my right. kid to, you know, to the soccer game next week. They have to make choices and it, and the government is taking away our internal choices, you know, by, by the cost of things we need going up every day. So that's the situation we're in right now. That situation, and you, you you have laid it out perfectly, it does hit the middle class and even the lower middle class. And the, the government's now making believe, well, okay, maybe the six, they floated the $600 trial balloon. The American people popped that balloon a little. But let me tell you, folks, I'm not an asset protection expert like Joel, but I did work in Washington politics at a very high level for over 40 years. <laughs> What'd you say? like the Holiday Inn commercial. You stayed at the Holiday Inn last night. Yes, I did. And those politicians, when they tell you, okay, okay, we won't do it, they're lying to you. What they're really saying is, okay, we'll find a back door way to do it. And another way they're doing it, by the way, is you see Yellen uh, two days ago, Joel, and I know this hits home with a lot of your clients, announced that, okay, uh, again, just for the wealthy, just for the wealthy, we're going to have an, an unrealized capital gains tax. We're going to send it through the ceiling. Unrealized capital gains. So what does that mean? Well, you know, normally you pay capital gains tax when you actually sell and dispose of an asset. There are a few situations historically where you would also have, you know, an unrealized capital gain. The two that come to mind would be one, a death. You could, you know, pass on, um, you know, your wealth and, you um, if you had a lot of wealth, excessive wealth, you know, beyond the exemption amount, which right now is around eleven and a half million dollars, but if you had more than that, then you know your heirs before they would get your money, there would be a deemed capital gains tax. That's one situation. Another would be if you actually would give up your U.S. citizenship, they have this concept of a deemed, um, a deemed capital gains. So they pretend like you sold all your assets the day before you leave. And then you owe a capital gains tax on the value of your assets. So those two scenarios have been around for a while. Uh, but what they're really, what they're really doing is they're, they're expanding that notion to many other situations where even if you don't sell something, you're going to owe a tax on it. And, uh, you know, you, you get into this concept called, you know, phantom taxation, meaning you didn't even get any money and you owe tax. And believe me, if the politicians of any stripe want to, roll that out, just just see how unpopular that is. I can't think of a more hated tax than a tax that is sort of arbitrarily manipulated into existence when, you know, if I get money and I have to pay tax on that money, that's one thing. But if I get right. nothing and then I owe tax, that is a very, very hard pill to swallow. So I think uh, particularly Democrats better be looking out if they um, put through measures like that. But you're right. They they tend to do it in a, in a stealth way that... Um, you know, sneak people in. don't really know. It's not out in the open. It's part of a, a bill of infrastructure spending or something like that, where it kind of sneaks in through the back door. And that's that's what they're probably going to end up doing, is my guess. I think you're exactly right. That's what they're going to end up doing. And, and I want to make it clear to people that, you know, sometimes we talk about when, when people think about a, a an asset protection attorney like Joel, they think, well, if I were a millionaire, I'd go there. But let me tell you something. This, what Yellen is going to push through now, and it is going to go through either directly or in the back door, this unrealized capital gains. Folks, if you own a home, what they're telling you is they're going to start taxing the equity increase on your home on a annual basis. Now, right now you're saying, wait, wait, Carter, Carter wait a minute. I, I'm not selling it. I'm keep, I'm getting, doesn't matter. They're going to tax the increase on the equity in your home. That's what an unrealized capital gain is. So you need to go to somebody like Joel to say, all right, I got to, I got to have some protection. These people are going to believe me, believe me dry. Right, Joel? And yeah, that's absolutely. not wealthy people. That's all of us. Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, you, you have situations where people middle, lower middle, even very, you know, people that have very little resources, the retirees and, fixed, you know, social security and things like that. You know, maybe they bought a home in, uh, you know, Los Angeles 50 years ago for $20,000. And right. uh, that home is worth $5 million on paper. 
doesn't mean they're wealthy. It, it means they have a, you know, a three bedroom house in a, in a, in a halfway decent area of LA, but that doesn't translate into wealth. So now the government's going to come along and say, well, because you have this property worth, you know, $5 million, we're going to tax you on it. Where, where are those people going to get the money to pay those taxes? Well, you know, what they're going to do, they only have one choice, right? They have to sell their property just to be that's able it. to pay the taxes. And that's, you know, that goes back to the feudal days, even the, gosh, even the Old Testament days where the Egyptians had to, you know, basically sell their property to Pharaoh to be able to pay their taxes. That's precisely what that is. And folks, Joel really nailed it with his example. If you bought a home, let's say for a hundred thousand, and today it it's you know twenty years ago, and today it's worth a million. Well, you're gonna have, Joel. I'm glad you said it because it was perfectly said. You are going to have to sell that home to pay the taxes on it, and there are a lot of elderly people in that position. And and then that, once they do that, you know they pay their tax. Now they have a lot less money. That means they can't really stay in that area anymore because they no. price them out of it. So they have to go live, you know, somewhere else, somewhere less desirable. You know, that just doesn't seem right to people in their, you know, retirement twilight years that that, that should have to happen. Same thing happens with farms. You know, I, I see that quite frequently. You know, you'll have families that have a farm that's been in the family for three, four, five generations. It's a thousand acres in, um, you know, Iowa. Well, you know, if you were to build, you know, four bedroom ranch homes on that property, it'd be worth a gazillion dollars. Uh, but you're not doing that. You're trying to grow corn. And, uh, you know, one year you make $80,000. Next year you lose money because, you know, the, the, the way the, the markets work with commodities. And so you may have something that on paper has a high value, but in reality, you know, it's not generating the same kind of income that, you know, a hedge fund would if you had a $10 million position or a $5 million position in a hedge fund. So, you know, we have to, you know, and, and government is historically bad at differentiating that. So, um, you know, that's, that's kind of, and in fact, it doesn't really want to differentiate that quite frankly, because exactly. you know, they want to spread that net wide. And then over time, like you say, it'll get wider. The amounts will come down. Um, and it won't be just people that have a million dollars in asset. It'll be 500,000. You know, um, President Biden has sort of staked out the wealthy as defined as being anybody that earns over 400,000. Well, again, I, I think it depends on where you live. And, you know, I mean, if, if you live in a city like New York, you're paying federal, state, local tax, you know, I'll bet you if you have a family of four, you don't have the resources to send your kids to private school. You're not li you're not driving a luxurious car. You know, you're living at 400,000. You're living up a, a relatively modest lifestyle, whereas other parts of the country, you know, maybe you would be doing better with that. But still, you know, you're already in the top tax bracket. So, yeah, you know, it begs the question, why should you be asked to pay even more? much more and much more. And all right, we've pointed out in some of the problems, some of the problems that are real. And, and Joel, I'm, I am, I'm saying it straight out. Having been in politics, they're going to get worse because we used to say when I worked in politics, there's a ratchet effect in politics. It only goes in one direction and that's from bad to worse. All right. And so the taxes are just going to keep increasing the spending, the printing. So Fortunately, you know, years ago, I, I went to a, a, a crusade with Billy Graham. Some, a lot of our people remember Billy Graham, the, the great, great minister. Yeah, and course. he talked about a, 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 a grandmaster chess player going into a museum and seeing an old painting of the devil playing chess against a young man. And the young man was losing horribly. It looked like he was checkmated. There was no way out. Um, and the devil was was smiling, his evil, uh, uh, cunning smile. And the, the old chess master kept looking at the painting and looking. And finally, he said, there is a way out. There's only one way, but there is a way. Well, I know one way for those watching this right now to escape what's coming down from the Biden regime in terms of, of destroying, simply destroying your income, destroying your livelihood. And Joel, that's the, the President's Week 25 conference. And, and I really mean that, folks. I am serious about that. 
the, the, this conference coming up uh, November 13th to the 17th in Vegas. Joel, tell us about it because, folks, I want you to, I honestly want you, there are only going to be, what, 75 people, Joel? Yeah, that's right. That's right. And I want, I want you to be one of them. I want those watching to be among that 75. Joel, tell us a little bit about the, 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 the conference and, and how people can sign up. And folks, do it, please, for your sake, do it. Well, you know, I think it's it, the starting point is that most people are sort of like sheep being led to slaughter and they don't really think about how to defend themselves, protect themselves. You know, the great judge Learned Hand, imagine that, a, a, a judge by the name of Learned Hand a right? hundred, hundred years ago said that taxes are not voluntary contributions, they're forced extractions. And that every American from the wealthiest to the poorest has the right to structure their affairs in such a way so as to minimize taxation. And we're not talking about evading taxes. I think you have to pay what you owe, regardless of what that is. And frequently people come to me, hey, I sold my house last week. And is there anything I can do about the tax? And I say, well, no, not really, you know, because you can't generally do, um, you can't generally affect a transaction after the fact, right? You've already, you've already done the transaction. So it really comes down to planning ahead of time. And we have some of the best people. We have tax lawyers, we have accountants, we have offshore advisors, we have insurance people and uh, bankers. And we're really you know, trying to help people come up with a solution that fits them. Again, 99% of the people are just going to, you know, like the, like the show Walking Dead, they're just gonna be zombies and march off to the slaughter, whatever that means. And, uh, but we try to, you know, we try to be able to um, present solutions, options, uh, you know, to people that, that they can take advantage of. We have some great speakers this year because it's our 25th anniversary. I can tell you, I really only invited a complete A-list of global Excellent. professionals. And Excellent. I'm really, really, I'm really, really proud that, um, you know, I'll just share this with you, Carter. I haven't said this to anyone else, but not one person we invited as a speaker said no. They were very, you know, whether it was the fact yes. that it's the 25th year or whether it's the fact that they just see everything kind of disintegrating before their eyes and they want to be part of the solution to people. We have some great speakers. We have Ron Paul, the three-time presidential candidate. We have G. Edwin Griffith, the author of The Creature from Jekyll Island, who's very critical of the Fed and money printing. Incidentally, he's going to be celebrating his 90th birthday with us in Las Vegas. So we're, yeah, we're just... I, it is... I just saw an interview with him with on Stansberry, right? Yeah. What an amazing man, 90 years old. His mind is totally, he is kind of like the, the anti-Biden. His mind is sharp as a tack. And really sharp. Incredible, folks. That alone, it, meeting this man, he is legendary. The creature, the creature of Jekyll Island is, is lays out how the Fed was created and how it has become, as he says in this interview I just watched, and I'm sure he'll talk about it, at the at the conference, it has become our master, okay, the the central bank. And he said he pointed out. I love one thing he said in the interview. Um, by the time they're done, if you don't do something like the asset protection Joel's talking about, it's going to be like you're living in the military, and they tell you every move you can make. That's where we're heading. So I thank God he's going to be there. Ron Paul, incredible, uh, Darlene Hart. I had never seen her before. I watched a video. She's going to be there, right? Yeah, she's uh, one of the top um, tax lawyer CPAs. Um, she's actually based in Switzerland, but she works exclusively with Americans that get involved in offshore investment, offshore structures. She's really one of the top gurus. Uh, you mentioned Stansberry, my very good friend, Porter Stansberry, uh, who you know he's been locked up for a long time in, in his publishing empire, which he he recently sold, and he's going to be sharing a lot of his thoughts with us about investment, staying ahead of the curve. Other, you know, Pierre Gabris, he's a Swiss money manager, he's making the trip over. Uh, Egon von Geiritz is one of the, the global talking heads on gold. He's also based in Switzerland, uh, has a company called Swiss Gold, and, you know, he's going to be talking about the role gold plays. Mike Cobb, my longtime, you know, very good friend, mm -hmm. who's one of the co-sponsors of the conference, and he'll be, you know, talking about your plan Bs, on and on and on. We'll have people there talking about second citizenships and residencies. And, you know, it's it, nobody's there to tell you 
to try to sell you anything. People are there to try to help you and, you know, to make you aware of what's coming and solutions that you can, you can take. And if you like them and you want to pursue them, you know, it's a small group. You know, you, you mentioned uh, Ed Griffin, he's having a conference, uh, I think in a few days called the red pill. That's his annual. Right. Yeah. Event. It's November, great- 7th. November yeah. 7th. Yeah. I've spoken there a number of times. So you go to red pill, you're going to be one of, you know, 2000 people. If you're lucky, you might get to shake Ed's hand and, and uh, have a picture with them. If you come to my event, you know, you're going to spend four days with them. You want to sit and have coffee with them. You want to have lunch with them. You want to, you know, talk to his wife, who's a health expert in the alternative, you know, homeopathic, natural healing vitamins. Uh, I think that's why they are so sharp at their age. So, you know, same thing with uh, Ron Paul, same thing with Porter Stansberry. I mean, you're going to sit in a small group. You know, we basically have 50 attendees and 25 speakers. I mean, you can't have a better ratio than that. So whoever you want to talk to, you sit with them, you talk about your own needs. People try to help you come up with your uh, strategies and solutions. That's really what President's Week's all about. So thanks for asking. I I think it's, you know, obviously it's not for everyone. It's a a rather expensive event. Uh, But in the greater scheme of things, you know, if we can help you protect, preserve, and pass on your assets, um, you know, it's it's a drop in the bucket. And, uh, you know, somebody just today sent me a note about um, it said, take a look at this um, cryptocurrency. And it described all the elements of the cryptocurrency, you know, unlimited supply, um, no controls on it, um, increasing supply, decreasing valuation, on and on and on. Um, and, and you're, And then at the end, it was something like, does this sound like a Ponzi scheme to you? And of course, your natural inclination is to say yes. And then, then you, you know, click to the last part of it. And it says, well, this actually, this isn't actually a cryptocurrency. This is the US dollar. So yeah. It, yeah. all the, you know, what they were describing, everything that's happening, uh, it's, it's uh, you know, it, it only really has value because we still believe it does. The minute people stop believing, you know, when they see the emperor has no clothes, the dollar will certainly, if it doesn't become worthless, one word, worthless, it will certainly become worth less. And, and so one of the main things okay. at President's Week is to talk about real, true diversification, you know, outside of fiat currency, whether it's crypto, whether it's gold, whether it's real estate, there's lots of ways you can protect your, your you know, your wealth, your purchasing power. And that's really what we're going to be talking about at President's Week 25. It's fantastic. And as you say, folks, Small groups, small group sessions, one-on-one. It, you know, you mentioned that it's a little pricey. It actually is not that bad. Most of these people coming, the speakers you're having, they when they're consulting, they charge thousands of dollars a day. Exactly. You're getting four days of their personal consulting for a couple thousand bucks. It's incredible. And it, incredible. it also includes all your meals, your you know, yeah. wonderful gourmet food, coffee breaks, cocktail parties. If yeah. if, it, if it is too expensive for you, and I would encourage your, you know, what your viewers to sign up for the virtual option. It's not as yeah. good, uh, but it's a lot cheaper. Obviously, it doesn't include the meals and the cocktail parties and all that. Yeah. But you'll still participate in all of the presentations. You'll still be able to hear all the discussions. And right. we have it set up in such a way that you actually be able to participate. So even if you're not there live, you'll still be able to ask your questions real time. And people answer your questions real time. Uh, that we're still limiting the total number of participants. So it's not going to be thousands of people. It's, you know, it, it should still be somewhat intimate if you're, even if you're not there, if you are there, it'll be very, very intimate. Very intimate. And let me suggest this, folks. If you think maybe you don't have the money to attend this year, go ahead and pull the money together to attend. And what you learn this year will assure that you have more than enough money to attend next year. Right, Joel? I mean, that's real. I'm serious about that, folks. It's that good. It's that good in terms of asset protection and 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 investment, a little bit of investment guidance as well. Well, so you know, for example, yeah. last year, you know, uh, a lot of the old people our age and older, you know, they weren't really attuned to the whole crypto um, world. And so we had some great yeah. speakers like Erica Gemma, who you know, Fantastic. Uh, Paul, Paul Rosenberg, you know, some real stalwarts in the crypto space who, you know, they they brought it down to, you know, Bitcoin 101 and explain what it is and really why it has value. Because you hear people saying, well, that that's just, 
you know, made up. It's phony. It doesn't have any value. So you have to understand, well, why does it have value? And I think once you understand that, um, you know, you know, I, I have clients that had very, you know, extensive wealth and they decided, okay, well, you know, I don't know anything about this crypto, but I, they learned about it at President's Week and they dipped their toe in the water and they invested whatever it is they invested. But, you know, I get great reviews from people today because yeah. you know, uh, last year, you know, Bitcoin was twelve, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. I think during my conference, it went up to $17,000. And uh, last week it hit an all-time high of $66,000. So whatever you invested, you know, you're up for, for X. And I'm not saying every everything you hear about at President's Week is going to, that's going to happen. But again, it's, it's true diversification away from the dollar. So th those are the types of things you, you'll hear about at President's Week. It's fantastic. So there you go, folks. Today we have, we have laid out a very, very serious problem for you. And we've, all, we've offered a solution. And uh, it may be one you want to grab onto, if not in person, at least virtually. Um, and if you can't do either of those, you still, every week at two o'clock on Thursdays, tune in to Joel Nagel's uh, Wealth Fortress Report, and you're going to be getting more and more of this kind of vital information. Never been more vital than it is today. So, Joel, thank you very, very much. Thank Excellent. you, Carter, and thank you know, the viewers for watching. I hope it's useful to them. And you're right. We'll try to bring important nuggets to people every week, regardless of where you are on the economic spectrum. I, I fully and truly believe that everybody has the right to protect their money. And, you know, quite honestly, I think people with less assets, it's even more important to them. You know, if tomorrow Jeff Bezos loses a million dollars, it's going to be a rounding error on his balance yeah. statement. But, you know, for most of our viewers, if they were to lose a million dollars, it would be life and death kind of thing. So, you know, we take it seriously. We want to help people protect what they've worked so hard to, to, to earn and, and to keep what's theirs. Great. Thank you, Joel. And folks, thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Thanks for joining Joel Nagel and the Global Wealth Fortress Report, a whole new approach to asset protection and estate planning so that now you can live the good life at a great price where the sun never sets on your financial fortress.